the Hellenistic period has traditionally been rather neglected by ancient historians. Um, this seems to me to be bizarre. It's a fantastically exciting period. Um, I think one of the reasons for that is that we don't have for the Hellenistic period the kinds of continuous narrative histories that we're used to having for both earlier and later periods of ancient history. Um, so for the late Archaic period, the 6th and early 5th centuries BC, we have the histories of Herodotus, of Halicarnassus. For the 5th century BC, we have the magnificent history of Thucydides. Um, and then once one gets into the late Roman Republic and the Roman Imperial period, we have Livy and Tacitus uh, and other narrative historians to work with. For the Hellenistic period, of course, there were some, some narrative histories of the period in, in antiquity, but none of these survive. So we have very little basis on which to create a, um, an, a narrative history of political and military developments in the Hellenistic period. And I think that's one of the reasons why this period has traditionally been rather neglected by modern scholars, because simply creating that kind of uh, chronological political um, spine for the, for the period is much more difficult than for earlier or, or later periods. But that also provides opportunities. Um, we have a fantastically rich body of material evidence for the period. Um, uh, archaeological sites stretching, as I say, from the Western Mediterranean out to out to India. Um, fantastically rich uh, coinage, huge numbers of inscriptions on stone, um, literary texts. Some of them, um, um, uh, some of them, very, uh, very exciting and thought provoking. Um, but relatively little of the this kind of what one might call traditional political military history that one has for other ancient periods.